Gringotts, right? Alright, so the year is 2001. Sorcerer's Stone is coming to theaters. EA Games puts out a Sorcerer's Stone game to cash in on it. 2002, Chamber of Secrets comes to theaters. EA puts out a game based on that. 2003, no Harry Potter movies come out. But there's gotta be faithful potheads out there that are still willing to cough up the dough for a new game. I mean, not me, but, you know, what does EA do? Puts out a game solely based on Quidditch. Quidditch, it's probably, it about has to be like my all-time favorite sport. Well, not to play, but to watch. Well, it's between Quidditch and horseshoes. Too close to call. But this isn't just Quidditch, it's the World Cup! So look out, Italy and Zimbabwe, cause here comes America! Oh wait, you have to start out at the Hogwarts Cup. Well, that's a little misleading. Is the Hogwarts Cup not good enough to get in on some of this billing here? I don't get why the game is called Quidditch World Cup, but on the cover, it's got Harry and Draco, who are only in the Hogwarts Cup. Well, I know why, because kids would see Harry and want the game, but still, suck it, EA. You can choose between any of the four Hogwarts houses. The back of the game says compete in the Hogwarts Quidditch Cup as Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Draco Malfoy Slytherin. Why does Malfoy get the shout-out? Wouldn't it make more sense to say Harry Potter's Gryffindor? Lucius must have bribed somebody at EA Games. But it doesn't matter because I'm huffing it. So I don't need a sorting hat to decide which house I'm in? Actually, that's true. As Dumbledore told Harry at the end of Chamber of Secrets, it is the choices we make that, you know what, if, if you don't know the quote, you can go look it up. But if you don't know about Quidditch, I guess we should still lay out the rules. Take it, Wood. Quidditch is easy enough to understand. You know, Oliver, you're doing a great job, but I think I'll take over. Okay, full disclosure, the game is fun, but the Hogwarts Cup, at least, is way too easy. You use the A button to steal and pass the quaffle, and the B button to throw it through the hoops. Sometimes I can hit both buttons simultaneously and steal and score at basically the same time. When the other team has the quaffle, you can switch to a beater and hurl the bludger at them. I think it's easier to just keep chasing them until you steal it, but I find myself doing that so much I'm just glad there's something else to do. The keepers? Well, you only control them to throw your teammates the ball. And if the whole game is this easy, my team doesn't even need a keeper. Hello, I'm Herbert Fleet, and I'm Hufflepuff's keeper. We don't need you, Herbert Fleet, but I like your name, so we'll keep you. You can perform combo moves which will help you earn special moves. The one you really want is the team move. And that's when things get surprisingly brutal in this game. No, not Herbert Fleet! We'll miss you, Herbert Fleet, and we're winning that cup in your honor. I know you were useless, but we're out for blood. And guess who makes a cameo when Gryffindor scores? <laughs> she looks like a ventriloquist doll. All of my boyhood fantasies about Hermione went flying out the window. And then came right back, I still love her. The snitch appears whenever the two halves of the snitch at the top of the screen reach each other. In order to get the two halves to touch each other faster, you have to make special moves, which will also give you a boost advantage when you finally get to chase it. <laughs> but this goes against the physics of Quidditch. The snitch appears whenever the f*** it wants to. There's a chapter in the first book where Harry catches it in under five minutes. That never happens here. Son of a snitch. When Wood was laying out the rules, he said, Whichever seeker catches the snitch wins his team an extra 150 points, so they nearly always win. But I'm scoring so much, I'm calling BS on that. Stay on the stream to build up speed and catch it, but... I don't need it. I'm way ahead. So why is Cho Chang chasing it? If she catches it, the game ends and Ravenclaw loses. You know what? She can catch it for all I care. Yeah! Good news for all you Ravenclaws out there. In the common room tonight, they're serving Cho's head a la mode. Mwah. Once you've beaten all three of your rival houses, you win the Hogwarts Cup and move on to the World Cup. Have a wonderful time. And 
Don't spend all your money on souvenirs. Souvenirs? That's what we've got Harry Potter World for. So now we have to choose a team for the World Cup. Well, Hufflepuffs are loyal, so I have to go with the home of the brave. The USA, the only choice you could make. I know, right? That's how it feels. The first match is against England, and I am going to murder these guys. But thank you for Harry Potter. I appreciate that very much. I will say the game's difficulty went way up. The keepers actually defend the hoops. They're very good. I mean, are they apparating? Apparating in Quidditch is... Cheating. Well, is my keeper any good? No, my keeper sucks. Herbert Fleet isn't seeming so bad anymore. God, I miss him. The smart thing to do is psych the keepers out. Kind of like the movie Basketball, but good. What you do is like, head for the left hoop while it's highlighted, and then shoot for the right. Uh-oh, here comes the snitch. England's ahead of me, so I really need it. And how about that? You know, I always thought the golden snitch was like a middle finger to the losing team. You can be ahead throughout the whole game, but if the other team catches that little golden... testicle... ball, it was all for nothing. That's just not fair. The team that plays the best should always be the winning team regardless of the sport. I mean, yeah, the team that played better gets the speed boost, but it's still anyone's game. So just always make sure your team is 160 points ahead of the other team and you'll be fine. So I go on to face all the other teams. France, Spain, the Nordic team. Yep, the Nordic team. When I said Italy and Zimbabwe, I, I was kind of kidding about Zimbabwe, but I thought Italy would be in this game over the Nordic team. Eh, leave the snitch, take the cannoli. And if you think my Italian-American accent is bad, you should really play this game. There is no way this voice actress is French. Très bien! France is definitely the best choice! And if I were Japanese, I think I'd be offended by this. To find the best choice, we won't let you down. Not only do the matches drag on, but the whole World Cup drags on. Overall, it's 18 matches. Now, the winning Hogwarts house got tickets to the World Cup. Going to 18 matches around the world seems like a pretty big prize for defeating three teams of pretty much high schoolers. But if it gets you out of class, I'm not complaining. How do they avoid serious injuries? Oh yeah, that's right. Magic. It is with great pleasure that I award this year's Quidditch World Cup to the United States of America. Well, it's about time. And when you win the Hogwarts Cup, you unlock Queerditch. Queerditch? Queerditch? Okay, I do not have enough time to uh, figure out what that is. Before I leave, I just want you all to know all the proceeds from this video are going to the Herbert Fleet Foundation. I'll leave the link in the description below.